In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to install an AC disconnect. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. The channel's all about DIY to save a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask for in turn for making this video. So we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. Before you're able to get your mini split up and running, you must first install a disconnect beside your condenser or the outdoor unit. And the reason why that is because that's where all your power is going to come from for the unit. You can hire a professional electrician or in my case what I'm going to do is I pull the proper permits and I'm going to wire it myself. And I've wired many houses in the past for myself so I have plenty of experience with that. Because the max amps of my mini split can take up to 35 amps, I got 8-2 wire that's going to be ran to the unit. And now with that being said, I need a 35 amp breaker to handle the max amps the unit can take. So I'm going to install this into the panel box, secure it to the panel using a 3 quarter inch Remex connector, run my 2 wire over to the disconnect, and I'm going to staple it using 3 quarter inch staples, and then I'm going to secure it to the disconnect using a 3 quarter inch Remex connector. And this disconnect can, is rated for up to 60 amps, so we're well within that. It's a non-fusible pull-out version, and this one can be found in my links in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. I'm going to open up the disconnect and install the 3 quarter inch Romex connector. Right here is the inside, and now I need to come through the back of this since I'm mounting this to the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and knock out this knockout here. And also, it looks like I could actually knock out the center knockout. Either one of these are fine for this 3 quarter inch Romex connector. In order to knock it out, I'm just going to use a punch and a hammer and then tap out that knockout. And I'm now going to finish this off with my linemans. And now in order to install the Romex connector, it's very simple. This is going to be fished in from the back like so and then i'm going to install the lock nut onto the romex connector all right and that's all there is to installing a romex connector and now let's go install the wire i'm now going to unroll the roll of 82 wire and then run it from this sub panel over to where the disconnect is going to be on the other side of that wall it's back there in the background so i'm going to go ahead and roll this and then go up into the floor joists and then go down to where the disconnect's going to be. I'm now going to drill a hole right through this top plate in order to bring the 8-2 wire down to the disconnect. I now got to drill a hole through the wall for the 8-2 wire to exit the building. And with that being said, if you take a look at the back of the disconnect, that Romex connector protrudes out the back. So I got to cut the sheathing out in order to compensate for that. So in order to mark the center and exactly where it needs cut out, if you hold up where the holes are on the disconnect, I have it setting right here in order to mount it correctly. So I'm going to make a mark on the back of the wall for the exact center. And then I'm just going to drive a nail right here to mark it. And then that's going to give me an area to drill in through that sheathing. I'm now going to knock the nail back through the wall and then drill it out with the two inch hole saw. And if I didn't have that Romex connector and the siding was on, I wouldn't have to do this. I could just drill it out with the three quarter inch drill bit. But because as you see there's no siding to space it away from the sheathing, I had to do this for now. I'm now going to fish that 8-2 wire through this hole. I'm now going to open up the disconnect and fish it through that Romex connector. Since I got plenty of wire, I'll leave plenty of wire hanging out here. And now I'm going to tighten up that Romex connector here on the back of the disconnect. Now with that wire secured to the disconnect, I'm just going to hold it up in the place and then pop the screws to secure it to the building. And now because I got to take this off when I get the siding here, I'm going to just put this on here. It doesn't have to be perfectly plumb for now. And I'm just going to anchor it to hold it until then. Now that this is roughed in, I'm going to place the cover back on until it's time to install the mini split. 
Something I'd like to mention is since I attached the disconnect to the sheathing, since then I installed the siding and I placed a mounting block in behind this in order to secure it and make it look good to the vinyl siding. So I wanted to point that out, but the installation to the block is the same as it was to the sheathing. I'm now gonna take three quarter inch wire staples and I gotta secure this wire within 12 inches of that box. So this block is totally perfect. And then after I secure it here, I gotta put a staple every four foot until I get to the panel. I now got the 8-2 wire to the sub panel, and I'm now gonna wire up the breaker. Now, with that being said, I pulled the proper permit so I can wire this up myself. So that's something that you might wanna hire a professional electrician to do. Definitely hire a professional if you're not comfortable with doing your own electrical. I'm now gonna make sure I got the main breaker kicked to the off position. Now, even though that's kicked off, the lugs underneath these lug covers are still hot. So you definitely need to make sure to watch for that. And I try not to make it a habit of touching this metal here because that's whenever the breaker's on live, but I still try not to make it a habit, even though right now it's off. So I'm now gonna install a three quarter inch Remax connector in the top of this panel. I have a knockout right here that's for the three quarter inch Remax connector. So I'm gonna take my punch and knock it out. I'm now gonna grab it with my needle nose and work it back and forth until it comes all the way out. I'm now gonna install the Romex connector. I'm gonna place it down through that hole, then take the lock nut and thread it on to it. I'm now gonna fish the 8-2 wire down through the top plate of this wall and then down into that Romex connector. I'm now gonna secure, using the three inch staples, the wire to this block and that block and it has to be secured within 12 inches in my area. I'm now gonna tighten up that Romex connector. Because this wire has to be able to curl around here and land in this ground bar, I'm gonna go ahead and tuck this in about where it's gonna be installed, then turn around and then I'm gonna cut the length off I'm now going to take my utility knife and strip the sheathing off. I'm just going to go over this jacket really lightly. I'm now going to take the paper off this bare copper wire. I'm now going to land this ground wire into this ground bar. And because this is a sub panel, you do not mix the neutrals and grounds. So with that being said, they're separate. Right here's the ground bar and over here are the neutral bars. I'm going to tuck my ground wire nice and neat behind the other wires. I'm now gonna land this right here onto the ground bar. I'm now gonna tighten that screw terminal onto that ground wire. I'm now gonna install this 35 amp double pole breaker that's gonna give us 240 volts. And in order to install it, I'm first just gonna clip it right into place first. And I'm now going to take the black and the white wires and just flex them right in towards where it's gonna be installed. So I'm gonna hold these wires back and then bend them accordingly, just like so. And as you can see, these need clipped off about right here in order to enter into those terminals. I'm now gonna remove about a half inch of this sheathing off the end of the black and the white wire. And because this white wire is typically a neutral wire, and in this case, it's gonna be a hot wire. So with that being said, I'm gonna to have to label it with black tape in order to indicate that it's actually a wire that's gonna be hot. I'm now gonna remove that breaker. And after we remove it, if you take a look at the back or the side of the breaker, as you can see, it needs torque down to 45 pounds wherever you land these wires, which are these two terminals. And it doesn't matter if the black wire goes to the top or bottom or the white goes to the top or bottom, either one is fine. So I'm going to just place this right here into that terminal and then take my 
torque screwdriver and then torque it down to 45 pounds. So I'm going to tighten it down until my screwdriver clicks. All right, you just heard it click there. So an important thing to do because this is stranded, meaning there's multiple wires make one, we're going to wiggle it back and forth a few times and then we're going to tighten it down again. And then we're going to do it another time. All right, I like to do it at least three times. Now we're going to install this wire into this terminal using that exact same method. All right, so now that they're wiggled and torqued down, we're going to place it back into the panel. And that's all there is to connecting the breaker. I'm now going to open up my panel box cover and label 14 and 16, these two spaces, they're right beside each other. That's where we just installed that double pole breaker. I'm gonna label that mini split. And now I'm gonna take my pair of linemen and break out these two spaces in order to accommodate the new breaker. I'm now gonna reinstall the panel box cover. I'm now gonna wire the disconnect and now the disconnect has the 8-2 wire going to it. So in return, I had to get an 8-2 whip. And the 8-2 whip and the 8-2 wire going to disconnect can handle up to 40 amps. And because this unit requires 35 amps, I had to use 8-2 wire. So now I'm going to show you how to wire the disconnect. When I open up the disconnect, I'm going to remove this portion of it that is the actual part that disconnects the power and take off this cover. And now, as you can see, we got our 8-2 wire here. If we look at the labeling here, we have line and line. So the line side is the wire coming from the breaker. So the load side, which are these two lugs, are going to be the whip. So the whip is what's going over to the condenser or the outside unit. And then again, the line side is where this wire is going to land, which is going to the breaker. So I'm first going to cut this to length and strip the wire. And because this will act as a hot wire, even though it's labeled like a neutral, I'm going to label this with black electrical tape to indicate that it is a hot wire. The grounds will be connected here at this ground bar. In order to make the length, I'm going to flex up the wire and then cut it to length. I'm now going to back out this ground screw and land my ground here. I'm now going to place this black wire on this line lug, and it can be in this lug or this lug, just as long as it's a line wire. Now we'll tighten that down. And then after it's tightened, wiggle it just a little bit and then re-tighten it a couple times. Now we're going to do the same to this wire. I'm now going to install the whip and in order to install this I need to knock the knockout three quarter inch size to go into the unit. Now when I wire this, I'm going to land my green wire, which is the ground, in with the ground bar. The red, which is a load wire, I'm going to land over here. And it can be either lug, this lug, or this lug. The black will be in the line side, or the load side. So we have our loads, which are these wires, and then the ground. I now have the disconnect wired up and I'm going to replace the cover over the wiring. Before working on the electrical, be sure to locate the breaker and turn it off that is powering the disconnect and verify there is no power to the disconnect. And or you could disconnect the power from the actual disconnect itself. Either way, verify the power is off. If you would like to see a detailed step-by-step -step guide on how I installed this mini split, Check out this video, it'll help you out.